Welcome to the part four of the lion, the leader, and the sage. I encourage you to listen to all three of the lion, the leader, and the sage, you know, parts one through three, before you catch up with part four. It'll give you a lot to think about as this story continues on. What have you been feeling over the past few months in the year of 2020? Do you feel that you always make the most perfect decisions? And if you already know that, no, of course I don't always make the perfect decisions, but I make the best decisions that I can. The other day, there was a man. Now, this isn't the story, but I want to tell you this beforehand, before we get into it. The other day, there was a man who made a couple of mistakes. See, these were genuine mistakes. He wanted to do everything perfectly, but the circumstances and what was going on during that time period just caused him to make mistakes. And remember, we are all human, so we're not perfect. And so he made mistakes. He felt bad about those mistakes. You can tell by the way he kept expressing himself within the period of five minutes. I don't know how many times he must have said, oh, I, I thought I had it or I thought I did this or, or that. And so what the man who he was talking to, who was in charge of making sure everything was, you know, okay, had told him, yeah, you know, these things happen and uh, let's just fix it. And then the other person said, thank you, basically, you know, in all his expressions, but he also said, yeah, um, you know, we're we're a team and we should just, you know, learn from them, don't we? Yeah, that's the that's the important thing that long as you know we can learn from it. And he also expressed how it gave a feeling almost like you can make as many mistakes as you want to, you, you see. Uh, just uh, make sure that, you know, uh, you know, we're all in this together. And then he said, right. And so the man who was actually, you know, um, tasked with making sure that everything was still OK, said, yes. Except but when it involves hurting other people, you see. All right. So that is just something for you to think over because you know what the man said who actually made the mistake before he left, he ended up saying, you're right. All right. Now, in the line, the laid leader and the sage part four, I want you to keep in mind that you heard me said before that some of my audio books are meant to be in series and they normally would end, uh, you know, after uh, maybe four to 18. Well, this one is actually designed to be ongoing. All right. And so this story that I'm going to relate to you today no, it is not in a written form or anything um, yet. The theme is what it is, but when it would be written down, you see, in an audio book layout type format, uh, there would be a lot of difference. But I want to really uh, place emphasis on this is one of those audiobooks that's designed to go on forever, forever, if you will. And when I think about this uh, story, it still, once again, takes me back 
to why I do enjoy stories uh, so much. And it has something to do with my upbringing, you see. Uh, we had uh, relatives and especially my father, you know, which is no longer, you know, around, uh, has fallen asleep in death, as they say. He had many, many stories. Um, he had some very uh, funny stories at times, <laughs> a lot of times. And he also had some very, very serious, deeply moving stories at the same time. Now, with that being said, I still want to share with you that this part four, even though I call it an original of mine, it does not mean that it is not a culmination of everything that I've listened to in stories from growing up and also experience. All right. Okay, so we will conclude this series, The Lion, the Leader, and the Sage, with part four. There is also a animation video along with this, if you want to ever uh, just show it in the classroom or what have you. You see, just, you know, like I've done with other podcasts in the past. So... Let us begin. There was a leader, and he was of a tribe, if you would, or brotherhood, if you will, that was very proud. Now, when I use the word proud, you have listened to this author describe it before, as being in a way of proud of the good you have and the good you are able to attain and also show or share with others. So if you have the ability to make somebody else's life better, it can make you feel pretty good inside. No one would deny that. For certainty, this tribe, this brotherhood that I'm about to share more information on, they knew that and they took it very serious. Yes, they took it so serious that they actually had, they won, they grew their hair long. It was curly. It was beautiful. Uh, Many of them even had their nicely groomed beards as well, too. So you can imagine looking at a person like that and them being very strong, uh, capable of many physical feats. It's almost like when you saw them, you were looking at a lion. And guess what? They knew it and they were proud of it. See, they had special skills and gifts, you see. And one of their gifts was to be able to defend against the jackals and the hyenas that would come into their land or attempt to come into their land. You see, through their gifts and their skills and their training, make no mistake about it, The jackals and the hyenas knew never to attack them directly, wouldn't dare try it. Now, think about this for a moment. The lions, if you want to call this brotherhood, they were proud in what they were able to do for themselves and in the good that they could do for others. And no one could argue with them otherwise. There was another group, a tribe, a brotherhood. And they were what you would consider leaders. 
you could just imagine the way that they carry themselves, uh, even the way they dress with monograms and things where, you know, they took, again, a very uh, modest level of pride, so to speak, in the way that they helped others. They weren't so uh, verbose in talking about it <laughs> as the lion trap was. But you could tell they felt good about it all the same. And one thing about the uh, trap that produced a lot of leaders, a lot. See, unlike the lion trap, they had many capable persons of defending and teaching others how to defend themselves and to just, you know, once again, handle the toughness of the land because I didn't even describe the land to you yet. Uh, the land that they were in had some snow, had some harsh weather, for, you know, from time to time, but they also had uh, on the edges uh, spring-like weather as well. Well, when it came to this tribe that produced a lot of leaders that was, uh, their land was like connected to them, you see, it was just totally green. It was beautiful. And it was what people may consider just optimal conditions all year round. All right. And, and, and that land actually had the most people in it, <laughs> you see. Uh, the lion tribe, oh, it was mostly only of, hey, if you want to learn how to deal with the harshness of the land, hey, <laughs> that's where you went. Well, once again, the leader's countenance, uh, their demeanor, the way that they 